What's up, tech crew? Get ready for the first look at a seriously exciting piece of tech that's just hitting the scene. We're diving into the brand new GLINet Comet, also known as the RM1. And yes, it's available for pre-order now. Link in the description. This isn't just any remote access tool. This is an open source remote KVM over internet that gives you complete user level control with 2K resolution at 60 FPS and incredibly low latency. Forget software installs on your target devices and say goodbye to subscription fees. We're talking BIOS level access, remote file transfers, and even the ability to control power with its USB port device. Buckle up. We're exploring the future of remote management. So I've just received this uh, comment, this KVM from GLINet, uh, totally free of charge. I'm going to give you total transparency here. This is totally to review this item, but that doesn't ever impact my ability to review them. So uh, on their website, you'll see that it says, you know, why choose Comet? You've got a one-time purchase, no subscription fees ever. Perfect. 2K 60 FPS video with H.264 hardware encoding for smooth performance, which is really great because H.264 is also widely compatible. You've got remote file transfers, even for offline devices, and ultra low latency 30 to 60 milliseconds for real-time remote control. USB device port for power control accessories over USB drives. Gigabit Ethernet for high speed, stable connections, and a Type-C power supply for hassle-free setup, which is really great because in this day and age, USB-C is a must. So, without further delay, let's open this thing up. Okay, so we've got some nice packaging here. So this is the Comets. We've got some extra cabling in here. What have we got? We've got a HDMI lead and a USB-C charging lead by the looks of it. Next, uh, we've also got um, the ATX power control board, which basically allows you to start and stop your computers um, directly uh, from the uh, Comet, if you want to integrate that. Um, I also happen to use um, smart plug sockets as well that I can remote control, but this is a really good option if you're going to pair it up with the Comet. So let's uh, open this too. In the box, we've got, and I know this is a separate accessory that you do have to pay for. So we've got a USB cable. We've got a mounting bracket so you can put it in the back of your computer systems. It's got a few different brackets there, which are great. We've got the actual board itself. And we've got those power cables as well. And some screws. But let's put all this aside for a second because we want to look at the star of the show, which is the Comet itself. This is the box it's going to come in. And there's all your specs of the services. Just to give you an all-rounder. Looks, looks like. Okay. So we've got a few startups and warranty guides. And then straight out of the box is the Comet. We've got a, another data cable. Oh, nice. And they actually pair this up with an Ethernet cable as well. And this is the Comet. Straight away I notice how light this thing is. Wow, look at this. Very sleek design. Let's see if we can get a nice good look in there. So on the front we've got a USB 2.0 port, a HDMI port, and the USB-C uh, power port. Actually that one looks like a mouse and keyboard there for USB-C. Hmm. Uh, on the side, oh, there's our power port, and there's our Ethernet Giganet port. Nothing on the other side, and then we've got a power or some sort of reset button. This is really light, man. This is nice, and it's metal. It's, it's all metal. Now, what is a KVM, a remote KVM? Well, a remote KVM is a keyboard video mouse setup. It's a device that lets you control a computer or a server from anywhere as if you were sitting right in front of it. Imagine you're traveling, but you need access to fix a computer at your office. With a remote KVM, you can see the screen, use the keyboard, move the mouse. And more importantly, you can use it to troubleshoot things and get into the BIOS of systems. In my particular use case, this is going to be really handy because I can use this when I boot up my main server, which is actually Lux encrypted, which means I have to enter a passphrase every time I restart the system. This is going to make doing that job 10 times easier because I no longer have to be in front of the computer to run those restarts. So even if the computer OS crashes or the device goes offline, you can still have access to it. No subscription fees and it integrates with pretty much everything that you can put a HDMI cable on. So yeah, it's pretty much got everything we need here. 
Um, what I'm going to do at this point is um, get this set up on my main server and then get the software all installed as well. One of the first things you want to do with your Comet is actually on a Windows computer, download the GLKVM beta app. And you can either do this on Mac OS or Windows. And essentially all you've got to do is go to the link in the description of this video, but I'll, I'll put it down there as well. Um, but essentially it's going to be um, glinet.com app rm. Alternatively, you can also go to link.gl-inet.com forward slash label forward uh, hyphen rm one hyphen app. So once you've done that, just download the Windows uh, file by clicking on here or whatever is applicable to you and then open the installer. Then follow the on-screen prompts, at which point you can launch the GLKVM app. Let's see if my GLINet username and password works on this, which it does not. So it looks like we're going to be signing up fresh um, with this. So when you finish the installation and you've entered all your personal details to set this up, you will come to the main screen. And the first thing that we're going to want to do here is actually bind our Comet. On the underside of the Comet, you will find a label with all the details that you need. All we have to do at this point is click Add Device. It will attempt to scan your network and look for that device. But if after a few seconds it doesn't seem to be finding that, you can add it manually, which I will do here. All you have to do for that is put in the device name and the device serial number. Once you've binded that device to your Comet, it will then display in here, as you can see. Now, I already have this set up on my computer, or rather server, in my garage. So again, we are running the original firmware here that it came with uh, on delivery. So if we go to remote control, it will connect to that device. Of course, there is always the chance you will get a failed connection. Nice. Okay, for some reason, um, when I first did this, it connected perfectly fine. Um, and no matter what I do, um, however I attempt to bind this, whether it's automatic on the network, as you can see here, or by typing the device name in serial number, I've only ever been able to get it to work once. I've never been able to get it to connect again. I've tried everything. I've tried firewall rules. I've tried no firewall rules. I've tried emergency access on my firewall to allow it to basically do anything and everything. And still, um, it comes across these problems. I downloaded the latest release, as you can see. It's nothing, just nothing. Nothing at all is working. And I have reached out to um, GLINet, and that was a couple of days ago, and nothing since. They haven't got back to me with anything um, for this, which is really just disappointing. Um, the funny thing is, you can actually connect to this directly over uh, IP address. I was always intending on blocking internet access for this device anyway, simply because you shouldn't be exposing an IV, uh, a K, an IP KVM across uh, any networks to the internet. Um, I would have disabled the cloud anyway afterwards. But yeah, disappointing. If I go to the IP of the, of the device directly, 192.168.1.196, uh, it's got a self-signed certificate, which I can go into. I have already set up... Um, a two-factor authentication uh, and password which lets me in and then immediately shows me my server so why it won't remote connect from here I don't know I'm going to try and update the firmware I wanted to try and show you um, how it looked and everything before the firmware changed well I suppose I can still do that via the web browser so as it stands so this is kind of what it looks like. If you go directly to the device itself on the IP address that it connects to on your network, this is kind of what it looks like. So you've got all the settings down here. You can change the quality of video, the orientation of the screen. If you want audio pass-through, your mouse, your keyboard. You, you do have a virtual keyboard, which is great if you're like working from an Android phone, which I do occasionally. It's got a dark mode, um, which is great. Although I have once or twice had to keep setting that to dark, so I don't know if it's storing cookies correctly. Um, then we've got toolbox where you can paste in like passwords or things like that into there and send them straight to the display, emulate keyboard commands, wake on LAN, um, and it does have terminal access as well for the device itself, which is great. 
Then we've got accessories, things that you've plugged in like the USB um, and what virtual media that we're uh, putting up. I know that you can upload um, ISOs to this device. It's been reported that the store onboard storage is extremely slow. Let's plug in my Ventoy and then... Uh, so apparently this thing um, has just under six gigs of storage. Um, it's probably got an eight gig um, built-in memory, the um, onboard storage, which I believe is an eMMC type um, drive. I don't think we're going to be able to... 5.73, mm, 5.5, have a look. I want to do something kind of small, like an Ubuntu live server. So apparently you can just drag and drop these files over. We're getting slightly faster speed than some I've seen. Not by much, maybe a megabyte, literally. So that's really not that fast in terms of the onboard storage. So that's not really great for us at all in terms of uploading, because by the time we finish uploading this, it's, it's going to obviously have the same type of read and write speeds when we're um, trying to emulate that into the system. So I'm not too sure. Other people have also said that you can't emulate um, the boot disk that it kind of creates from a USB stick. So I'm going to try that out now myself just to validate that myself and see if we can't get a bit of faster speeds as well. So I'm going to cancel the upload from here and bear with me. So I've plugged in the USB. It's not really found that, is it? In terms of accessories, what if we have to refresh the page? No. Let's try and give the KVM a remote reboot. Okay, so we've rebooted the KVM. Um, still not detecting that external USB. Okay, we're still failing here. Let's go ahead with the new version, shall we? So the current version is 1004. The new one is 1007. I just want to log in window, modify the function remembering account password, improve P2P function, and fix the known bugs. Yeah, sure, let's go for it. Yeah, let's spin that back up, shall we? So I'm not too sure, but it doesn't look like anything's really happened. Changed there. Yeah, it doesn't look like the upgrade process is working either. Okay, so that looks like that is not upgrading. Okay, what I'm going to do is go to... Can we connect to this device? No. Oh, dear. After a ridiculous amount of testing, as you can see, from pinging the device, from changing networks, doing a lot of different things, um, I still could not get this device to connect via the app, uh, the Windows app, back to the device. It seemed to ever only work once. This obviously could just be a complete dud unit, but this is the review unit that they sent me, and unfortunately it is not living up to expectations. That said... I can still connect to the device uh, locally via its IP address, which I've reverse proxied on an internal access list just for myself. And yeah, um, there's not much to say else with it. I've shown you a bit of the interface. I've showed you what I can. And um, I'm sure other reviewers out there have got a, a mixed bag of uh, things as well based on what I've been watching. Um, and I implore you to go and watch all those other reviews as well. I will still use the device, definitely. I've got one on pre-order as it is. The mere fact that I still can access this over my local IP um, and block its internet access on my firewall is more than sufficient for my needs. Um, and it's obviously pretty well priced as well, especially for the pre-order sale. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Um, sorry I couldn't really get you um, the full effect, show you the full process, but unfortunately that's kind of out of my hands. If you wouldn't mind supporting my channel and me, you can do that in a few ways. You can do that by donating me a coffee, or you can subscribe to my channel as a membership and watch these videos before anyone else. Thank you once again, and I hope to catch you in the next one.